Hello. Welcome to Storytime with Calf. Today's book, The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn by Mark Twain, a.k.a. Samuel Longhorn Clement. Longhorn Clement? That sounds wrong. Doesn't matter. Alright, we're gonna pretend it is, though. I'm right. I am right. Okay. So let me see here. I'm going to just read you a chunk from chapter three so you kind of know what we're in for here. Here we go. Well, I got a good going over in the morning from old Mrs. W old Miss Watson on account of my clothes, but the widow, she didn't scold, but only cleaned off the grease and clay and looked so sorry I thought I would behave a while if I could. Then Miss Watson, she took me in the closet and prayed, but nothing come of it. She told me to pray every day and whatever I asked for, I would get it, but it weren't so. I tried it once I got a fish line, but no hooks. It weren't any good to me without hooks. I tried for the hooks three or four times, but somehow I couldn't make it work. By and by, one day, I asked Miss Watson to try for me, but she said I was a fool. She never told me why, and I couldn't make it out no way. So that's The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn. It's about a kid named Huckleberry Finn, right? Um, Huckleberry Finn pops up first in a book called The Adventures of Tom Sawyer, also by Mark Twain, which is about a kid who is, um, fairly, he's okay. He's a troublemaker. He's always getting into mischief, and he's got his friend named Huck Finn, who's the poor kid in the neighborhood. His dad, Huck's dad, is an alcoholic who beats him, um, so Huck is always looking for ways to not be at home, basically. Um, Tom is always doing things like tricking the neighbor boys into getting his chores done for him. And then one day he and Huck find um, this guy, well, without spoiling it, I'll do, I will have a summary video, but basically Tom and Huck find this guy who's got all this money and this treasure and then um, they find the money. They get the guy in, arrested for murder because he committed murder, that's how I got the money, and then Tom and Huck get the money. So when Huckleberry Finn starts, Tom and Huck are both fabulously wealthy, but the money's in the bank, and Huck Finn is basically an orphan, so he's been adopted by a widow, the widow Douglas, who's going to take care of him and teach him how to be civilized, because he likes to run around barefoot in his overalls on the raft and just play in the Mississippi. And he doesn't care for shoes, he doesn't read, um, the book itself is written in the dialect that would have been spoken at the time period that Huck Finn is set, which is pre-Civil pre War U.S. in the South. Because of that, there's a lot of language that is from that time period, right? There are slaves, and the N-word is used quite a bit. Um, in the videos, there's a lot of videos about the N-word. There's some articles. Read those. Um, I want you to come up to read them and then respond to the questions and send those to me. Um, we're not going to go into that in the video because that's an actual conversation we need to have. But the big thing I want to get across here is that the N-word was an extremely derogative word, which is basically boiling some people down to just the color of their skin and their status as property, not treating them as people. Huck joins up with Jim, an escaped slave. And Jim, despite the fact that he is a full-grown adult, like married with children, is less of a person than 14-year-old Huck Finn who has nothing. And the big dilemma that Huck has during the entire book is, does he turn in Jim because he's an escaped slave and that's what the civilized person would do? Or does he accept the fact that Jim is his best friend and also a father figure, like the best father that Huck's ever had, and help him escape, even though he thinks he'll probably go to hell for it. And that's a big conflict that Huck deals with for the first, for a good chunk of the book. What is his responsibility as far as that goes? So this is a good book. Um, it is written in that dialect, so it can be a bit challenging. We're going to read parts together, parts on our own and parts in small groups, like we've been doing all semester so just all year so just be ready for that um i expect everyone to use their language appropriately the n-word is a slur you're using it in the book and that is as far as i expect that to go thank you all right so mark twain born samuel langhorn 
I was close. Clemens in Florida, Missouri. Um, four years later, his family moved to Hannibal near St. Louis. He grew up on the river. He wrote all of, most of his books have to do with the river. Um, he wrote a book, Life on the Mississippi, Connecticut. He also did write Connecticut Yankee and King Arthur's Court, which is not about the Mississippi. But his most famous works tend to be about the Mississippi. He worked as a steamboat pilot which is really cool. Um, and that's where he got some of his information. He liked, he liked small town America. So, mm -hmm. The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn is set in various places along the Mississippi River during the 1930s and 40s. The region, now known as the Midwest, was still largely frontier, um, sparsely inhabited with few cities and towns. People lived off the land, hunting, fishing, trapping for furs. However, industrialization was, in fact, underway, and the Mississippi was a major point artery of transportation between the north and the south. There were a lot of steamboats, although a lot of people did travel by raft, like Huck and Jim. The Mississippi became a place where cultures collided. There were rich and poor, northerners and southern, southerners, frontier people and city dwellers, all converged there. So, the other thing that we're going to talk about a lot in Huck Finn, there's a lot of instances of superstition. So, we're going to take a pause for a bit to talk about that. There's a feud, kind of like the Hatfields and McCoys. So, we're going to take a pause and talk about that as well. Um, basically, if you're doing this online, um, what we're going to do in class is I have some videos and some articles. Those will be posted online. So, you'll just need to join in on those feeds and kind of add the comments to those questions, if that makes sense. So you'll still have a discussion, it'll just be a virtual discussion, which is less fun, but also still fun. That'll be fine, you can do it, I believe in you. So um, we are gonna also watch a brief summary on what uh, Tom Sawyer is about, just to kind of give you that background, because like I said, Huckleberry Finn is a character from Tom Sawyer. And you need to understand both of those things. Tom pops up as well in this story. Um, in addition to that, before we start to read the book, we are going to take a good look at some historical context, some of what was happening, um, a deeper look at the N-word and the history of that, and kind of what that means for Huck Finn. Um, and also, Huck Finn is a very, very controversial book. When you look at books that have been banned, Huck Finn is on top of the list in most places because of the N-word and because of the fact that it deals with a lot of things that we don't really like to think about. It deals with the idea of, it deals with an unpleasant part of our past. And Mark Twain uses the N-word, I think, because he wants you to be uncomfortable. He wants you to be like, but Jim is just as much of a person as, as Huck. Why, why are we doing this? So that's the point, I think. So as we're reading, I want you to kind of be paying attention to that and seeing what you can find out with that. There'll be a lot more historical context, um, family feud. Oh, also we're gonna talk about con men a little bit too. There's a lot of just weird characters. So we're gonna take a couple pauses because Huck Finn is so deep and so dense and there's so much going on. Um, we are gonna take a couple pauses for fun and just talk about other things that are related to Huck Finn, and kind of cultural context buried in there, so. Um, again, we're going to be dealing with satire. So satire is something that pokes fun, usually to improve. So basically, it's making fun of something to prove a point and hopefully make things better. So Mark Twain is trying to make society better, but he's also poking fun at it. All right? Theme is the main point. Um, what is the central message, the insight? As we're reading, I want you to see what you think the theme of Huck Finn is. Imagery. Using language that appeals to the five senses. Excuse me, sight, hearing, taste, smell, touch. Notice Twain's use of imagery. Right, he wants you to feel like you are floating down that raft. Floating down that river on that raft. Humor. It's basically meant to amuse. You've got situational humor, verbal humor, physical humor, like when a person falls, like the Three Stooges, that's physical humor. So you're going to look for examples of humor in Twain's writing. Conflict, struggle between opposing forces, so watch out for the conflicts. There's interpersonal, there's conflicts between people, conflict between person and nature, conflict between a person and their own ideas. There's a lot of that, there's a lot happening. Also, you've got dialect, which is the use of a form of language spoken by a group of people in a particular region. Mark Twain is going to use the dialect spoken by the people who lived in the Midwest during the 1830s and 40s. It's gonna, it can be challenging. So give yourself time. 
I'll go over it with you in the beginning. We're going to do a lot of, it's going to be similar to what we did with Shakespeare. We're going to pause, we're going to translate. And then as time goes by, you're going to need me to translate less and less. And then eventually, you'll be reading it like a pro. It'll be great. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. I believe in you. Sorry, my dog is watching chickens. Um, also, you've got comparing and contrasting. So compare the various characters in Huck Finn to see kind of how they go. And then characterization. So what do we know about the characters? Direct characterization is when the author is making direct statements about a character, what they look like, their personality, their actions. Then you have indirect, which is information about a character through what the character says and does, what other people say about them, and how other people um, behave towards them. So kind of watch and see how um, Mark Twain uses indirect and direct characterization. Also, as we're reading Huck Finn, I want you every day to find at least one word. You should be able to find at least one word per chapter, especially when you're reading on your own, that you don't know. So take that and write it in your memo book or your notebook in your vocab space. Look it up and um, give a definition. So then every day you'll meet with your little group when we come back in and you will share what your word is and what it means. Be ready to share that. I'll be calling on people to share that information as we go. So, this is The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn by Mark Twain. Um, like I said, check out that YouTube video, check out the articles, and I'm excited to dive into this with you. Very, very excited. I'm sorry. I'm very thirsty. Mm. Am I doing this just so I can show off my excellent mug collection? I mean, have I been using a different mug in every video? Yes, I have, and yes, I am. All right. Thanks, guys. I'll see you later. Bye.